On to another major story today. Carrie and Boris Johnson are expecting a second child month after a miscarriage left her heart broken. The Prime Minister's wife announced the news, saying she was hoping for a rainbow baby this Christmas. Mrs Johnson posted a photo of a Christmas bauble pram and wrote, At the beginning of the year, I had a miscarriage which left me heartbroken. I feel incredibly blessed to be pregnant again, but I've also felt like a bag of nerves. Fertility issues can be really hard for many people, particularly when on platforms like Instagram, it can look like everything is only ever going well. I found it a real comfort to hear from people who had also experienced loss, so I hope that in a very small way, this sharing might help others too. Mm, yeah, mm. Carrie is the latest public figure to open up about losing a child during pregnancy, but she follows in the footsteps of many well-known faces, including Meghan Markle, of course, and John Legend's mm. wife, Chrissy Teigen. Now with us now is Ruth Bender Attic from the National Director of the Miscarriage Association. Hi Ruth, so why is it important that public figures like Carrie Johnson speak out about miscarriage? I think it's really helpful, but I also think it's very generous and let's let's be clear really that that not everyone wants to talk about about their experience whether they're high profile or not. Um, so it, it has to be a considered, you know, a considered uh, decision whether you do or not. But what's good about it um, is that it can be very much a, a validation for people who perhaps haven't talked about their loss, haven't shared their experiences, to know that other people in whatever walk of life have gone through or are going through something like they have, and perhaps are having some of the same feelings of of loss and sadness and grief. Why do you think that there is a sort of a taboo or a reluctance to have a conversation around, around baby loss and miscarriage? I think we're quite bad at dealing with loss and death anyway, at, at any stage of life. I don't think we're brilliant talking about, you know, the death of an, of an older person, either of a parent. Um, but with miscarriage in particular, it is a kind of hidden loss. This is um, the loss of what might be, of what's going to be, of, of hopes and dreams and plans. Although for many people, this is absolutely a baby, however, you know, however few weeks it might be into the pregnancy. And it's, it's difficult for people to kind of grasp sometimes that there can be such strong feelings of loss. So they don't know what to say. I think it, in addition to that, we have this sort of rather... British tradition of trying to cheer people up. So quite often people will say something like, well, never mind, at least it was only early. At least it wasn't really a baby. Think of it as a, as a, as a heavy period. At least you have a child already. And those kind of things when, when they're said to you can make you feel that people just don't understand the kind of thing that you're going through. It can make you feel that it's quite you know, it's not being acknowledged. And so you stop talking about it. And I guess the other thing I'd add is that, you know, for, for many people, miscarriage is private. They want it to be private. Or other people think it should be private. We're talking about, you know, vaginal bleeding and pain and distress. And these are things that for many people, there is a feeling it shouldn't really be talked about publicly. And what advice would you recommend to those people who have experienced a miscarriage? We try and steer clear of, of giving advice, to be honest, but I think it can help to talk about it with somebody who will understand that, you, that you're feeling close enough to and, tr and you trust enough that they will listen because it's listening that is the real helper. If somebody really listens to what you're saying, and I think if you don't want to talk, if you want to keep it private, but you're still feeling very alone, and that can be true for somebody who's pregnant after miscarriage too, because it's a very scary time. It can be helpful to do something like visit our website where you can read stories from other people. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to write anything, but you can read how other people have felt. And in a way, that's what Carrie Johnson has done. And that's a very generous thing for her to do. Mm. So, I mean, we know that this is not an uncommon occurrence, but what kind of, what are the statistics around uh, miscarriage or, or baby loss in the UK? 
So miscarriage, which is classed as a, as a, a loss before 24 weeks of pregnancy, it's thought that around one in four pregnancies ends that way, of which the, far, you know, the, the large majority happen in the first 13 weeks or so, but still it can happen much later in pregnancy. Um, so it is horribly common. And I, and I wonder what support, so obviously you have a, a great organisation um, with resources, but what, are the, what sort of support in the community um, is there for, for women and families affected by this? You know, how easy is it to get support from your GP? Where, would you, where do you go? I think, sadly, it can be difficult to get the support you want. I mean, some people are fortunate enough to have really good support from their family and friends or, 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 or colleagues, for that matter. Others will talk to their GP, but it can be tricky finding a time for a GP appointment or for, you know, to get a GP appointment. Some people will manage to have support from something like a bereavement support midwife in the hospital. But for many people, they're, they're sort of looking around for where they can get that support. And I think that's why so many people come to us. Can I ask um, if there is somebody who's had an experience with a miscarriage do you find that that puts them off from uh, being pregnant again in the future? That's a really good question. And, and of course, you'll be unsurprised to know that that varies hugely from person to person, from couple to couple. And sometimes you know, within a couple, that one person really wants a, another pregnancy and the other one is feeling quite anxious about it. Many people will want to try again, but they might feel... Um, anxious, they may feel they need to wait a long time until they're perhaps recovered emotionally as well as physically. Others want to start again as soon as possible to kind of fill that gap. But certainly for many people, when they are pregnant after loss, there is a sense of, of both excitement and hope. But along with that, there is, is very often fear and anxiety that the rug having been pulled out from under them once before, that might happen again, that, that things might go wrong again. So, so I, I, I think, I think uh, Carrie Johnson used the word nervous, and that's, that's really understandable. So people need support then too. And that means perhaps listening to them and saying, you know, I imagine you might be feeling a bit anxious this time around, or are you more hopeful? So that you're kind of giving them those options to, to talk about how they feel. And, and just finally, I, I imagine there'll be lots of women who are watching us right now who have experienced miscarriage or, or baby loss. You know, what would be your sort of message of hope to, the, to those women and those families? I think it's helpful to know that although miscarriage is horribly common, most women who miscarry, miscarry once. It's, it's certainly true that, that some will go on to miscarry two or three times or even more, perhaps interspersed with healthy pregnancies. But most women have a positive future. Although it's also important to say that it's not true for everyone and some people sadly won't go on or will make the decision not to try again. And as I'm saying the word women, I think, you know, we, we must remember the partners too, because this is... This is for both of them and the feelings of both of them. They're, they're equally important. Absolutely. Uh, Ruth Bender Attic, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for sharing your thoughts. It was great to chat. You're welcome. Thank you. I mean, it's incredibly important to talk about it. And, mm. you know, it, and as, as Ruth says, you know, it is incredibly common, one in four pregnancies. And so that. it needs to be something that we normalise mm. talking about so, so people don't feel alone. Absolutely. Um, but, but also wonderful news for the Johnsons, isn't yeah. it? Um, Great news. You know, a new baby, 18 months after they had Wilf. Is it 18 um, Yes, 18 oh, months since they had their amazing. first son. Yeah. So, you know, and, and due in December, so a lovely kind of Christmas present or something to look forward Christmas to. Christmas baby. Yeah, Christmas oh, great. baby. I mean, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I imagine they've, they've got quite a lot on, haven't they? Yeah, the course. Johnsons at the moment. Yeah, quite, yeah, quite exactly. busy. So yeah. a new baby just to add to the list. Um, but it's always such lovely news, isn't it? it? Is, and isn't I liked it? I liked the little ball ball that she, she tweeted on the Instagram. Yeah. I thought that was incredibly sweet. Who doesn't? Incredibly sweet. <laughs>